Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, FPL Consult here, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys my Game Week 1 team selection, so essentially my final draft that I'll be taking in to the season. I cannot guarantee that this is 100% the team that I'm going to go with, but generally the structure is there, and I would say 95 percent may be subject to one or two players that could change the rest of the players are pretty much locked already so hopefully this video is helpful for you guys if you do enjoy it please do drop a like and also subscribe as well if you are new around here before we jump into the draft i haven't really pushed this much um recently but if you guys are interested now is a really good time to sign up for channel memberships it supports the channel that's one but also it's a very nice community that we've been chatting in uh, since the whole of preseason and of course throughout the whole season as well I will be active in the discord for members as well I'm keeping up to date with my transfers and team selections and also if this is something that's interesting to you guys and you want to interact with me on a slightly deeper level then the discord and memberships would be something that you're interested in so do click the join button next to the subscribe button if you are interested in that one right so Let's kick off this video and I pretty much have gone with a 99.5 team value here and I have left 0.5 in the bank that will come in very handy soon so I'll speak about that at the, at the end once I've shown my whole team but let's talk about the defense first so I've gone with Henderson in goal for Henderson I think at this point in time he is the go-to 4.5 million keeper I don't think there are other standout 4.5 million keepers right now Maybe Flecken, but I'm just not convinced by Brentford's fixtures and I back the Crystal Palace defence slightly uh, more than, than I back the Brentford defence. There is some concern, obviously, if Mark Gehi leaves for Newcastle and maybe even Anderson rumoured to be leaving. Uh, that could impact the Crystal Palace defence, but for the time being, both of them are still with Crystal Palace and it seems as if they would be starting the season. So given that's the case... I do think that like, the Crystal Palace defense is still some, uh, is still a team that we can trust, and therefore Henderson for me is still first choice in terms of my um, goalkeeper selections at the 4.5 million bracket. I've kind of ruled out the possibility of going for a 5 million or a 5.5 million keeper, uh, namely Raya. I've kind of ruled that out. I want to spend the money elsewhere. So 4.5 million keeper in defense. I have Trent. Gabriel and also Barco. So Barco is the 4 million defender that I'm starting here and that would make more sense when you take a look at my bench. I have Robinson on my bench, a bit of a spoiler, but he is the one that would be coming in more regularly and Barco is here only because Robinson on the bench has Manchester United away now in game week 1. So Barco is filling in here, Everton away in game week 1 and he will be very handy to have. Um, come game week four as well when he has Ipswich. Just to touch on a bit more on Barco, Brighton have now signed a new um, defender in, if I'm not wrong the name, I don't want to butcher the name, but I think it's Kadioglu. And if that's the case, there is some doubt creeping into some people's minds about whether um, he is going to take Barco's place. But I think after reading some of the forums, I'm not a Brighton expert, but when I've re read some of the forums as well as some um, Brighton fans, what their sentiments and opinions are on Twitter, they seem to think that Kadioglu would fill in at right back. That's kind of where they feel they're lacking a bit of depth there. And on the left, it is still Barco's place to lose, of course, subject to Estupinian coming back and maybe uh, becoming first choice again. So Barco, for me, still feels fine to start the season. So I have him here in the team, 4.0 million um, defender. For Trent and Gabriel, they are both premiums. Trent, I think, has been locked in my draft for a really long time. Pulled off an assist as well against Sevilla. That kind of locked it in for me as well. I really want him in my team, given the fixtures that they have. And then for Gabriel, 6 million. This is the spot that I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit here. Do I want Gabriel in this spot or do I want Gavardiol? For the time being, it is Gabriel because I can't look past the first three fixtures. It's really good fixtures for uh, Arsenal. Of course, the Aston Villa away fixture is not great for, um, for clean sheets. But at the end of the day, they are still Arsenal and they have just looked so solid in preseason. It feels to me like they will carry on the defensive solidity that they had last season into this season. And Gabriel's goal threat, we already saw it um, even in the uh, most recent game, the most, most recent friendly against Leon that um, Arsenal played in. Gabriel scored a goal, uh, uh, Saliba also scored a goal and Arsenal won 2-0. So the attacking threat from Gabriel is much better than Saliba, so I would tend to cite Gabriel here, even though he's slightly more of a minutes risk compared to 
Saliba, um, about Killer Fiori coming in, does it impact Gabriel's minutes? I think potentially, but for the time being, it seems as if Killer Fiori would likely be utilised more as a left back, replacing Zinchenko. That was the substitution made against Leon. So I would assume that the back line first choice for Arsenal would likely be Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel, and Killer Fiori. So I don't think Gabriel's minutes would be impacted too much, and thereafter. Because of that kind of um, safety net, I do feel like I would prefer to just go for the greater attacking threat there. So, Gabriel is in here. In terms of Gabriel versus Gavardiol, I do think like I may be missing out on some returns here and there with Gavardiol. But with the way that Arsenal are playing at the moment and how set-piece focused they are, I feel as if Gabriel not going for Gabriel is also fairly missing out on a good number of returns there in the first few game weeks. So I'm going to take a chance for the time being. I'm happy to take the chance on Gabriel instead of Gavardiol. And just a slight concern for me on Gavardiol, not to scare Mongo or anything, is that um, in the community shield when Rico Lewis was playing, Rico Lewis was the one that was inverting and Gavardiol played a little bit more like a left centre back. So in that situation, he wasn't as attacking like we saw last season and Rico Lewis was the one that was more advanced. Now, of course, long term, Kyle Walker would come back, and that would obviously mean that Gavardio would adopt the same positions that he did last season, where Walker was the one who stayed back a little bit more and acted as the right side of the three uh, three defenders, and thereafter, Gavardio had the freedom to go forward. That would be the long-term plan, but Kyle Walker is not back yet, and also... Given that he's back in training, for example, how long will he take to get up to fitness to start a match? My guess is that he doesn't start against Chelsea. I think Rico Lewis still starts that one. And then how long more until Kyle Walker comes back up to speed? So, and given that the game week 2 fixture is the plump fixture for Manchester City, it could be a case where Rico Lewis still starts that one. So, not to scare Mongo or anything, I think going for Gavardio is a perfectly fine pick. But for me, I would go with Gabriel for now. And that is obviously for now. If come the game week one deadline, we will obviously have deadline streams here as always for the whole of this season. And if come the game week one deadline, I change my mind, Gabriel could very well become Gavariel. But for the time being, this is the back three that I have. So in midfield, I have Nkunku, Saka, Murphy and Eze. So very clearly, there's no Salah. I have gone for a Haaland-only draft. It's a bit of a spoiler, but if you've been watching my previous few drafts, I've pretty much always been on um, Haaland only, or I've kind of switched into a Salah-Haaland draft sometime maybe two to three weeks back. But since then, I've kind of stuck on a Haaland-only draft, and this is still today in the final draft here, a, a Haaland only draft. And that's because I think I will find myself captaining Haaland more in the next few game weeks. From game week 2 all the way till game week 4 at least, I will be captaining Haaland. Game week 5, Haaland has Arsenal. So I likely won't captain him then. I will have to look for another captaincy option and maybe look to bring Salah potentially um, into the team by game week 5. So that is something that's at the back of my mind. I do have some plans for that. But in terms of starting the season with the midfielders, Nkunku, Saka, Murphy and Eze are the four that I've gone with. On the bench, I do have a fifth midfielder uh, in Emil Smith row that you will see later on. Um, but to speak on these four first, Nkunku and Eze are the two that I will speak on first because they are the ones that have not left any of my drafts. I did consider maybe going without Eze and maybe replacing him with Jota here because I do have 0 0.5 million in the bank. But I think about what is important that I want in an FPL uh, asset and Eze is much more nailed for 90 minutes. He is also on penalties and these are kind of criteria that I look at when, when I consider an FPL asset. So as much as Liverpool are by far and away the better attacking team, I do think that as an individual asset, Eze to me at 0 0.5 million cheaper as well, is a better asset to have than Jota. So he justifies his spot in my team still. So as is here, Nkunku at 6.5 million is someone that also has not left my team the whole of pre-season and he is in the final draft here. He's someone that I feel makes a bit of a joke of his price tag, 6.5 million with the fixtures that Chelsea have. That's kind of what does it for me from game week 2 all the way to game week 7 or 8. That's when Nkunku can start every other game. Um, and pretty much, I do think like returns would be 
pretty good for him given those fixtures. The role that he will be playing still remains to be seen for sure because he has not played a game where Kyle Walk uh, sorry, he has not played a game where Cole Palmer has been on the pitch together with him. And that could change his role slightly. But even so, I'm willing to take the gamble that he would be playing in a slightly uh, similar to a number 10 kind of a role, which is where I think he excels and gets really good returns. I mean, he is a player that, that has the potential, as we saw in the Bundesliga, to perform at a very high level. So I do expect that this season he will start to pick up form. And as a Chelsea fan myself, I have high expectations for him. So Nkunku is still in the team. For Saka, he is someone that captures that premium midfielder price point for me. I did mention pre uh, it, a while back that I do have plans to bring Salah in later on. I think this season it will be a case where we need to find the right time to jump on and off players. And these players would likely be premiums as well. I'm speaking about the Fodens, the um, potentially even Kevin De Bruyne if he starts to pop off or, or, or even Bruno Fernandes. These premium midfielders or semi-premium midfielders are players we need to be able to reach and having Saka at this price point, 10 million, allows me to kind of upgrade to Salah if I need to at 12.5 or downgrade to Bruno Fernandes at 8.5 if I need to. So Having this spot is important, and I do think, as I've said, that the Arsenal fixtures are really good. Wolves at home uh, and Brighton at home in the first three, so I do think Saka on penalties as well would kick off the season quite well. He did look quite sharp against Leon as well, missed a couple of chances, hit the post here and there, um, but fully expect him to do well from the get-go, so Saka is in the team. And Murphy here is the one that I think might turn some hits, but I'm very hot on him. Simply, be, uh, There's definitely risks involved, but the reason why I am quite hot on him is because he's only 5.5 million, and for me, he is not a player that I will keep long term. There are very well risks associated with the, the Jacob Murphy pick here, in that um, Anthony Gordon long term would be the one that gets the left, uh, left wing position. Harvey Barnes is the one that could likely fill in on the right uh, on the right wing, which is where Murphy currently operates. But for the time being, Murphy seems to me like he is first choice. There could be rotation, um, even from the get-go against Southampton. I'm fully aware of that, and Murphy could maybe only get 70 to 80 minutes. But my my kind of gamble or my kind of guess is that Barnes, uh, sorry, Gordon is the one that would be substituted out slightly early simply because he came back from preseason uh, he came back from the euro slightly later murphy has had a full preseason with uh, newcastle gordon only came back recently and he's only played 45 minutes in the recent um, in the recent friendly and that's pretty much it so eddie howe also alluded to the fact that gordon needs to build up his match fitness etc um, and i do think like gordon will still start for sure but I think if they are to, to kind of ease him into the season, I think Gordon is the one that could get a substitution maybe in the 70th to 80th minute for Harvey Barnes, who could very well fill in at left wing as well. And then Murphy is the one that get 90 minutes against Southampton. So I'm banking on that. And also that Murphy is first choice for the right wing spot until maybe later later down the line where, where Barnes maybe uh, takes over that spot. So for the time being, with the form that he put up in preseason, five goals and two assists, I find it very hard to kind of ignore that. And Newcastle are predicted to score very highly against Southampton. So I'm capturing that fixture here. And he is someone that I will be rotating with Emil Smith Rowe on the bench that I've mentioned. So this game week one fixture here is when I would start Murphy. If he presents himself to be a bit of a risk, I could very well. Uh, start Emil Smith Rowe for the next few games where Fulham also do have a very good run. So I, I guess Murphy to me is a bit of a calculated risk. I know full well that there are um, you know, minutes concerned with, with Murphy here, but I think I'm fine to take the chance on how explosive he could be against Southampton at St. James's Park as well. So that feels to me like, like a high scoring game. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about Jacob Murphy as the 5.5 million option that I'm starting in game week one. But if not, this is the four man midfield that I've gone with, with Smith Rowe on the bench as a rotating option. Let's take a look now at the forwards. 
So in the forwards position, I have Isak, Haaland and Solanke. So as I've mentioned, it is a Haaland-only draft simply because I do think I'll be captaining Haaland for more game weeks over the first five. So he's in the team, but he's not the captain that I'm going for in game week one. I'm thinking between Isak and Saka, both of them on penalties. Isak missed one in preseason, but I do think like he would still be the one that is the default penalty taker. And Saka also on penalties and both of them with plum home fixture. For now, it's on Isak, but I could very well change to Saka come the deadline. And I think the last player that I guess would also turn some hits is Solanke here as my third striker. So I'm by no means 100% set on Solanke, but I like the fact that I will get a Spurs attacker here if I go for Solanke at 7.5 million. So let's get the concerns out of the way. There is a chance, there's a growing confidence that he will start in game week 1, That, but there's always no certainty there is a off chance that he doesn't start, in which case this plan could fail. But I am quite quietly confident that he will start in game week 1, and I am also thinking that people are kind of sleeping on the Spurs attack a little bit. I do think like Spurs will, given, given how strong an attack they are, Despite them maybe being poor at the back, I still do think, like, attacking-wise, against Leicester away, I definitely think that could be a high-scoring game. And Leicester and Spurs have always proven to be a high-scoring game in general. So with Son on the, uh, on the left and Kulosevsky on the right, I do think, like, Solanke will get very, very good support and, and supply of maybe assists. So Solanke, if he starts, will be a very, very good asset to have. For the time being, I am taking the gamble that he will start against Leicester. I don't think, on the topic of penalties as well, I don't think he would be taking it off Son, but I don't think that also puts me off um, going for Solanke at 7.5 million. Like I've, I, I know full well that he may not have penalties, but at 7.5 million, I'm still willing to go for Solanke and take a bit of a, a differential pick here. The only thing that I'm considering about this Murphy and Solanke combination here is that it, these two players could very well, at those price points that they're at, right, 7.5 for Solanke and 5.5 for Murphy, if I switch it around, 7.5 million could go into the midfield and that could very well be Jota or Gordon. And then the 5.5 uh, in the forward spot could be Jao Pedro. So I'm working between uh, Solanke plus Murphy or Jao Pedro plus Jota, for example. And when I look at Jao Pedro, yes, he has Everton away in game week one. I don't think that's a super easy fixture. For the next few weeks, if I did have Jao Pedro in my team, I won't be starting him in game week two and game week three. I would be starting Emil Smith-Rowe on the bench. Uh, I'll, I'll bring Smith-Rowe into the starting 11, and Jao Pedro will be sitting on the bench. So say, for example, I won Jao Pedro for game week four, I could very well just do Solanke down to Jao Pedro, in game week 4, which is also when Solanke's fixtures start to kind of turn a little bit because Spurs do have quite a tough run after the first two fixtures. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe it's worth going for Solanke first and then Jao Pedro later on, which also then enables me to get the Newcastle, uh, Newcastle attacker there in, in Murphy, which I'm quite hot on as well. So on the topic of Jota that I am missing out on, I think for Jota... I am quite concerned about his minutes. I'm not certain that he will get 90 minutes. In fact, I don't think he will get 90 minutes. I think for, for sure there will be minutes given to Darwin um, or maybe even Gakpo as well. So many players could fill in in that spot. But he is such a clinical finisher. And with the finish that he pulled off against Sevilla, uh, where, where Trent assisted him with a really, really good ball, it kind of makes me think as well, Jota does not need a lot of good chances to score. And maybe even 60-70 minutes could do damage. But the hope is that Murphy plus Solanke outscores Jao Pedro plus Jota over the first maybe 2-3 to three game week. So that's the combination I've gone with now. And so Murphy and Solanke is in the team. For the, the, for the other options on the bench, I have Fabianski as the substitute keeper. I think there is there's still rumours as well that Areola might leave West Ham. It's kind of died down a little bit. Um, so it seems as if maybe Fabianski doesn't doesn't get a look in if, if Areola stays. But on the off chance that that, that does happen, I, I'm fine to have a 4.0 million playing keeper from West Ham. If it doesn't, I don't think there's other very standout 4.0 million 
uh, keeper picks as well. Smithrow on the bench, as I've mentioned, could very well come in for Murphy. That is the rotation that I'm planning for, for these two picks. For Robinson, he's the one that would likely come in from game week two onwards, replacing Barco. Um, and that would be a backline of Trent, Gabriel and Robinson that I'll be starting week in, week out. Robinson with really good fixtures for Fulham and there's some decent rotation that I can go with as well. Um, especially in game week 4 where Barco has Ipswich, he could come in for a couple of players too. So the last option is Harold Bellis. I don't think I'll be using him much. He is my 4.0 million bench uh, fodder. I did consider as well using the 0.5 million that I have in the bank to do something like Harwood Bellis to Konza. But I just do want to make sure that I keep the Liverpool slots open in that maybe I want Saka and Diaz or maybe Saka and, uh, sorry, Salah and Diaz or Salah and Jota as well. So I don't want to rule that option out for myself. Um, so I've chosen to keep that 0.5 million in the bank, which I think could come in handy if later down the line I want to do, for example, Solanke to Jao Pedro and Murphy up to Jota. I think having that 0.5 million in the bank could be useful because those players would likely rise in price if they do well. So there we go with the team. I've gone on quite a bit. I, I've talked quite elaborately on some players, but I didn't want to kind of go through my whole thought process around all the players that I've had in and out of my drafts, as well as the players that I think could potentially still make it into my team come the deadline. But at least for now, this is where I'm at with the team. Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below couple of um, administrative things. I do have a deadline stream tomorrow, which is Thursday. Um, it is not the deadline, but it is a pre-deadline stream where I will be rating your teams and giving my opinions on them. So if that is interesting to you and you want to come down for that one, uh, there is a scheduled stream already. By the time you're watching this, I would have also scheduled a stream um, that will be happening on Thursday uh, in the evening. So if you can make it for that, um, set a notification. Also, the deadline for this week, game week one, will be on Friday. It is a Friday deadline, so do take note of that one, and we would be streaming uh, three hours before the deadline as always. So two streams coming up in the next two days. Keep a lookout for that one. But if not, I'm very keen to know what you guys think about my team. Should I be going for Murphy? Is it too risky? Solanke, will he start in game week one or not? What do you think about the overall structure of the team? And how are your teams looking like as well? Drop it all in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's loads more content coming this season. FPL is finally back and we are going to be back with deadline streams as well. So very exciting stuff. I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye.